My title officially is Continuing Positive Engagement, but I like to call it Friendly Stalking Your Member of Congress. <laughs> So um, this builds on, on the last question, but you really need to build actual relationships with your members of Congress and congressional staff. You saw a lot of congressional staff here and they came and speak. It's because we've built solid relationships with them and they will basically just stop what they're doing on the Hill and come and speak at our conferences, which is great. That's the kind of relationship that you want with them. Um, and, and the way that we do this is that public policy is not political. This is personal. We're talking about saving lives, treating your child, saving your life, saving your loved one. And our goal at RDLA is really to connect every member of Congress with a constituent. So that when someone comes in and talks to them about rare diseases, they're not thinking rare diseases. They're thinking about Max in their district. That little boy that came in and was adorable and we want to save his life. Right, that's what we want this to be personal for them. Um, another big goal of ours is that you guys wanna go in and establish yourself as a resource to the member. So you are a wealth of rare disease resources, right? Like you know firsthand experience what it's like to live with a rare disease. So you wanna be that credible source for that member. So when any bill that has to do with rare disease comes across their desk, they give you a call, right? That's, that's your goal. You want to be that kind of um, person for your member. Um, so I'm glad that all of you are here. We, um, we're over capacity. We have uh, about 50 more advocates than we had last year. Um, but we didn't want to turn any away. So welcome. I'm glad that everyone made room and squeezed. But um, this is only the first step. Coming to DC once a year is just the beginning. And it's not enough. Um, and following up is basically your key to success. And there's gonna be plenty of opportunities throughout the year through RDLA and through um, the normal things that members do that you can um, friendly stock them. Um, so I do wanna show you this slide about how much these in-person connections from constituents matter. It is the most important thing. Letters are great, calls are great, faxes not so much. Back in when I worked here, that was faxes more. But um, you can see social media, it's great, but it's not as effective as that in-person connection. So as much as you can get in front of your member, that's the key. Um, but another great thing, if you are a head of a patient organization, you actually represent constituents in their district. So you can go and speak to other members, and that actually has an impact on them as well. All right, so follow-up to success, this is essential. The forum on Advocacy Associates is great. Make sure you get the member staff as actual business card with their email address, right? You wanna be able, definitely send your thank you through that app, but you wanna have their email address and you want to be able to email them. Um, so again, when you say thank you, follow up very quickly. Don't let more than a week go by, even if it's just a little blurb with Thank you for your time. Here's the photo. Here are the, the, the key points. And it could just be co-sponsor and the bill number, right? You don't have to re-emphasize everything. Members of Congress also really love thank yous, but they're a little bit more old school. They actually like handwritten thank yous. Those take a little bit longer to get to the member, but the member actually sometimes sees them. So I used to work for um, Congresswoman, or now she's House Majority Leader Pelosi, and we would literally put all of the thank you cards that she received from her constituents in like a book. And when she came to the office, she would review all the thank you cards. Um, so things that you can do is you can share a recap of how the meeting went also on social media. Um, you can tag your member. You can tag RDLA. Um, letters to the editor. You could write a letter to the editor about your meeting. Um, if you get it published in your district, it's likely that the member will see that because they also they see a lot of district information if it's um, naming them in the um, that there's always an intern in the office that is like combing through local media for their member's name. Um, and then you want to make sure, you want to track. Um, and you can track through RDLA meetings, we have tracking tools, but you want to track to see if your legislator actually did what you asked them to do. And if they did, say thank you. And if they didn't, follow up with that email, with that ad, that, not the app, because you won't have that anymore. You need to follow up with that email address from that staffer and say, what is the status? Why haven't you joined? Or why haven't you co-sponsored? Um, number two, very important as well, follow up with us. Um, 
The first thing is uh, if there are any tough legislative policy questions that you get on the Hill tomorrow, don't worry, you're not supposed to be an expert, you're an expert in your disease and your personal story. If it is a policy question, we are here to help with that. So you just say, that's a great question, let me write it down, I'm going to follow up with you. And RDLA will actually provide you with the resources to follow up um, with those tough questions. Um, another way to, to kind of promote what you've done here on Capitol Hill is write a uh, blog about your experience um, and we will post it on our testimonial page. Blog, two pages, not ten pages, two pages. Include some pictures. But we love to share patient stories about the experience that really gets other people involved. Um, another way to keep that contact is to participate in our actual alerts that we send out. We send them out three, or we send them out throughout the year. Um, we do both phone calls and um, email your member, and so you want to have those reinforced asked throughout the year. Um, and you can stay, we encourage you to stay engaged with us throughout the whole year. Again, you're here once, but it's important um, that you stay engaged the whole year. We have monthly legislative calls that you can participate in. Um, the agendas are open for any organization to speak. Um, on any policy issue. If you have a legislative question, you can call us up and say, there's this bill I'm interested in, and we will bring a speaker onto the RDLA call to speak about that bill so you can learn about it. Um, we send out monthly e-action blasts, so if you have a policy issue that you're promoting and you want on that blast, we will send it out to our list so that we are sharing all of this information. Um, but it gives you the latest news, it gives you all the action alerts so that you can stay informed. Um, there is an also another really important way that you can increase your impact on action alerts. So it's great when you take action. It's even better when you email that action alert out to your contacts and ask them to take action. And if you're an organization that's raising money, um, they, there's some, been some studies that if you, um, if, a, if a person takes action politically, they're more likely to give that organization money. Um, we're not soliciting your money, so have at it. Um, but that's a really important way to engage your followers to show that you're being political act politically active. Um, all right, and then this is the friendly stocking part. So members of Congress are in their home districts a lot this year because it's the election. So um, two ways that you can find out where your member will be is to sign up to receive news from their official website and then also sign up to re receive news from their campaign website. Um, and then you'll get a lot of emails, but you'll always know where they are. So you can attend a town hall. We do have tips online on how to be successful um, with these town halls about how to show up early, get some face time with the member, ask questions that get your member engaged um, at the town hall. Uh, you can attend a campaign event or a holiday party. A lot of members do, um, once you get on their list, you'll get invitations to those events. Um, even better, invite members to attend your organization's event. So we have two members of Congress coming to speak tomorrow morning at our lobby day breakfast. That's another way to engage your member is to get them to come to your event and see all the people in their district that care about this issue. It really makes them care a little bit more. Um, and then the last thing is our in-district, oh wait, I forgot the caucus. Um, we have caucus briefings throughout the year and so we will send out action alerts to ask for you guys to call your member and ask to send a staffer to that caucus briefing so we can keep reinforcing the message about the need of the rare disease community. Um, and then now the last thing, the in-district lobby days. So uh, I do want to show you this. The highlighted blue is when your member is actually working in D.C. this year. <laughs> right. When they're, yeah, so um, all of the non-blue spaces are opportunities for you to connect with your member and district. Um, we are planning for our largest in-district lobby day event, seven weeks this year that they're on recess, July 15th through September 5th. Um, so we're going to be hosting three regional legislative conference. It's similar to this, except about half the size and only like six hours instead of ten hours. Um, so we are having them uh, on June 28th in Boston, Massachusetts, and then June 30th we'll have one in Seattle and Chicago. So we'd love to have you join us for those. Um, if, you can't, if you're not local to any of those areas, don't worry. We'll have advocacy training via webinars. Um, and then next year we might come to your state. Um, and then the last thing is our fifth annual Rare Voice Awards. Um, 
and I'll say the best way to solidify relationships with staff is if they do help you out, you want to say thank you in a big way. And you can nominate them for a Rare Voice Award. Um, and we actually recognize all congressional staff who are nominated for an award. Um, and this is really, you know, amazing. They, they get no credit. They do most of the work, like 99% of the work they're doing, and they get no recognition. Um, and so we actually had 70 congressional staff join us at our gala last year. So another great way for you to network with congressional staff where you're not, you're like building that relationship but not necessarily saying, hey, I need something from you today. Today is actually about thanking them. Um, so it's a great way. Uh, you are all welcome to join us. Our event is free for patient advocates to attend and there'll be um, key opinion leaders from Congress and NIH, FDA. Um, the, the NIH really loves our event. Um, so it's a, it's a great opportunity to meet with all of the stakeholders who are important to uh, rare disease drug development. So this is my last slide and um, there's a lot of political cartoons about politics. This is probably the most PG one I could find. Um, but in the end of the day, members of Congress work for you. They are public servants and even though that's kind of a joke. Um, we as a community can really do the impossible. We can make Congress work for our community. We did that last year with the passage of the 21st Century Cures in the House, and we can do that again this year with the passage of the bill in the Senate. We really have that opportunity and we really have the power, and all of you guys here today and the 50 more advocates that we weren't planning for showing up is for, like fantastic. So I'm very excited, and thank you all for being here, and, that's, and I'm gonna turn it over. We talked a little bit about um, working with the media and social media, which I don't know anything about, so I'm gonna turn it over to Stephen. <laughs>